You have been listening to a concert by the Ambassador Orchestra in the studios of WEAF, New York. This is WNAC in Boston with studios in the Shepherd Stores. This program was broadcast simultaneously over the facilities of WEAN in Providence and WNAC in Boston with studios in the Shepherd Stores. Stay tuned now for the Yankee Home and Food Show. This is the easy listening spot on your dial. Get some today. News while it is news. The Yankee Network News Service on the air. 1 p.m. Network Edition. Washington. The White House Press Service today informed the New England governor. Came to you from the Boston Garden. This is the Yankee Network. This is the Yankee Network in New England a group of independent radio stations linked together by mutual agreement and telephone long lines for the purpose of simultaneous broadcasts of identical programs. Serving the most highly developed industrial area in the Western Hemisphere, where 2% of the nation's area holds 6% of its population and does 10% of the country's manufacturing. More than 3.5 million people working with an annual per capita income of about $2,000 where the people contracted for more than half a billion dollars worth of new homes in a year, and at the same time bought almost 400,000 cars. Pardon me if I may interrupt. Before we get saturated with statistics, I'd like to make perfectly clear one very important point. Whatever New England might be statistically, New England is people. So if we're going to understand the area, we'd better meet some of the people and find out what they think about the place they live, such as the professor here, who's studied New England for a number of years. Professor, if you please. Oh, yes. The New England area occupies an ancient landmass on the eastern slope of the Appalachian geosyncline, which was modified by several faulting some 600 million years ago and further modified by four glacial epochs, leaving the terrain a conglomerate of igneous rock outcroppings and drumlin remains with... Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Perhaps one of our older citizens, a gentleman of culture and learning in the old traditions of New England. Historically and traditionally, this is the area where American independence began, where men established the three foundation stones of liberty, the right to worship their own way, to govern themselves, and to have their children educated in public schools. And we have, mostly, been that way ever since. Yes, we're a tough-minded people, deliberate in decision. But once we've made up our minds, we're hard to dissuade. Lots of New England people settled in Missouri, you know. Yes, people who had to be shown. Farmers, craftsmen, laborers, businessmen, and technicians operating large and small business and feeling pretty much like this about New England. Farming's been here from the first. There's still 50,000 of us making a living off the land. Something about a New England man wants to own his own piece of ground even enough to set a house on. These independent people spend the profit from their labor to maintain the highest standard of living in the nation.
As one of those people who are always saying things to remember once said, New England is whatever you're looking for. Yes, the outstanding characteristic of New England is variety. Inland from the coast of Maine, the people live in picturesque small towns and villages. There are 16 million acres of forest primeval, parts of it never explored. One reason why Maine is the largest producer of pulp paper in the country. One seventh of the nation's potatoes are grown here. Most of them in some 400,000 closely cultivated acres in one county. More than 22 million pounds of lobster are harvested in Maine each year. The largest annual crop of that delicacy from any state in the nation. Portland, Maine's largest city and hub of its most heavily populated area. An important commercial port doing a $25 million export business. The skilled labor in the state produces textiles, shoes, and with an enviable reputation as a sportsman's paradise, it's natural that they manufacture some of the best sporting equipment. At Maine People spent almost a billion dollars in stores last year. Rhode Island, smallest of the 48, with the highest population concentration, almost 700 people for every square mile of ground. Along the Blackstone River is located the heaviest concentration of industrial enterprises to exist on any waterway in the entire world. The stockpile of raw material purchased to operate the diverse industry of this little state costs over a quarter of a billion a year and produces better than half a billion dollars in finished products. Chief among them, jewelry, textiles, fine tools, machinery, and silverware. And the people in Rhode Island have money in their genes, almost one and a half billion every year. most Yankee of the Yankee states, with an almost perfect balance of rural and urban life, where New York businessmen are at home. There are more telephones per household in Connecticut than in any other state. 91% of the homes serviced. More patents for inventions have been granted to its citizens in proportion to population. Market gardens and poultry farms abound in the rolling countryside, but Connecticut's shade-grown tobacco is the most valuable grown anywhere, producing for the state the highest dollar value per acre of any crop in the country. There is here the largest concentration of machine tools in the nation, 85 per 1,000 population, 6.5% of the nation's total. They produce the highest per capita value of manufactured goods, textiles, silverware, firearms, typewriters, clocks, knit goods, airplane engines, hardware, more than a billion dollars worth a year. The average Connecticut family has more than $7,000 a year to spend for a state total of spendable income annually of over $5 billion. In the state where Ethan Allen and his Green Mountain Boys bewildered the British, maple sugar is a trademark. The dairy industry ranks high in the business profile supplying one and a half billion pounds of milk from 300,000 cows for a total of $72 million a year. Enough for export to Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York. But more people make things than grow things in Vermont, leading the country in production of granite and marble with large deposits of asbestos and talc. Skilled Vermont hands produce tools, textile, organs, scales, and window screens. Vermonters spend nearly a hundred million dollars for things to eat and almost the same amount for things for their cars. Almost 20 million on clothes for a total state retail sales figure approaching half a billion dollars. For centuries, he has watched over the state where 80 mile-high mountain peaks and 1,300 lakes 
vast forests and almost 300 wooded islands make it one of the leading vacation areas in the country. New Hampshire visitors tarry longer in summer and ski enthusiasts in winter use some of the finest slopes in the nation. Nearly a million vacationers every year swell the half million population. Although a third of the land is in farms and produces more than $70 billion worth of dairy products, hay, apples, peaches, and berries, manufacturing is a more important source of income. Textiles, leather goods, paper, and pulp accounting for 60%, and the rest in wood, metal, stone, and clay products, with electronic equipment gaining rapidly. New Hampshire business gives the New Hampshire people nearly a billion dollars a year to spend. The Bay State where they fired the shot heard round the world. Massachusetts where more than half of New England lives, the second most densely populated state in the country ninth in population in the nation with a proud tradition of culture and learning. Beginning with the oldest college in the land, Massachusetts has added 28 colleges and universities and 69 other institutions of higher learning, established the first free public school. And today, the study and research facilities in one small area of the state is a trillion dollar row, boasting the highest concentration of scientific minds and equipment in the entire world. Famed Yankee ingenuity combines keen minds and skilled hands, like the fishermen who sail from Massachusetts ports and bring in the highest dollar value catch in the country, making Boston the nation's leading fish handler. Shoemakers in the state produce more than 20% of the nation's footwear. In the field of electronics, modern technicians take home a $200 million annual payroll. More people travel in Massachusetts every year over constantly improving roads, to visit the beginnings of United States history, the first battlefield of the Revolutionary War, the village green and tavern, where a determined militia waited all night to lose a battle and win a war. And they enjoy a variety of vacation spots. The rolling wooded Berkshire Hills in the west. sand and sea on Cape Cod. Vacationers spend about a half a billion dollars each year, and the Massachusetts retail sales total reaches over six billion dollars annually, and the people of Boston have the highest family spendable income in the nation. This is New England, a profusion of individuality, managing to maintain a solidarity that makes the area unique in the nation where the small producer insists upon his right to manufacture custom-made merchandise, but buys his material and equipment from the industrial giant because he gets it cheaper. Where the serene dignity of the historic past lives amid the hustle of modern business, and the one-room schoolhouse still functions within the same area that holds 13% of the nation's colleges and universities, awarding higher degrees. Where the town meeting still survives, but the people could not live for more than 90 days without importing food. Where the pride and tradition of freedom is woven into the fabric of life. And in the exclusive club or the corner tavern, they argue politics and religion, business and the fate of the Boston Red Sox. New England, a collection of home towns where a Providence housewife will say, Yes, I've been to Boston but there's nothing there that I can't buy right here, downtown. And a newspaper editor in New Hampshire. Sure, sure. Hey, Charlie, kill that Boston story on page one. Watts Electric has agreed to build in town and they're going to employ over 200 people. And in cosmopolitan Boston. Uh, yes, my dear. To California. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess they'll be going out through Dedham and Framingham, you know. Mm-hmm. But, sir, 
Considering the size of your business, your international contacts and all, why do you maintain home offices here in Boston? Why, my dear man, I live here. And down east in Maine, only salmon pool on city limits in the country. Send the president for salmon caught here every year. Washington? No, never been there. Got all I need right here. Hey, uh... New England, the most provincial metropolitan area in the world. If you really want to reach these people, you go to where they are, to the hometown. Radio Hooper of 90? One Yankee affiliate has a local station down east. Maybe you think this is a southern mansion, but it's not. The trees are chestnut, and the building houses the studios of another Yankee affiliate programming to the people in a community. Located in the quiet dignity of the rolling hills of western New England, serving a rural and industrial area that boasts the highest per capita sales in the state. Actual construction on the 36 by 40 foot stage is slated to start early next month and the facilities will be used during future fairs. This Yankee station broadcasting to a population of some 50,000 people maintains a listenership of nearly 50% in competition with five other radio outlets. Perhaps because it provides allied services for the community it serves, social and business functions on its spacious lawn and a year-round art gallery a showroom for the very active art colony in the area. This participation in the social and business life of the community makes this announcer's voice welcome in the homes of local people as a friend and neighbor. Flying with a crow on a radio beam some 160 miles east by south to the sands of Cape Cod in Massachusetts. The local people listen to the only radio station south and east of the canal, a Yankee affiliate. And the vacationers listen too. Located on a Cape Cod lane, less than a country holler from the Atlantic Ocean, it might be a well-proportioned summer cottage. But inside, the professional efficiency of a modern radio station programs to a population that increases by 800% yearly in some towns some are visitors, of course, customers for the busy shops in the most popular playground on the eastern seaboard. songs of our times. We hope that we have played one of your favorites. These are your Cape and Island radio stations. A million visitors every summer listen to Yankee Radio on Cape Cod. Some 140 miles west, according to the crow that flies, in the heart of Connecticut's industrial and financial area, where more than 50 insurance companies gather $2 million and more in insurance premiums each day, more than half the working population is employed in industry. Here, they say, mass production began in the arsenal of the nation. And in the surrounding countryside hard by, some of the nation's most successful truck farms and the best tobacco grown in the shade is gathered in harvest. Here, this Yankee affiliate programs to a highly diversified year-round audience. Almost a million people in their primary area bringing news, music, entertainment. Yankee stations serving all of New England. Stay tuned for the news.
News while it is news. The Yankee Network News Service on the air. The Yankee Network established the first radio news gathering organization in the nation and maintains a tradition of unbiased news coverage. News from all over the world comes into the Yankee Network newsroom from the wire services, national and international, by telephone from established sources, and feature story material on coming events by mail. The news is gathered, sifted, checked, rewritten for broadcast. Time and accuracy are the important elemental yardsticks. for the news. And then, News While It Is News, the Yankee Network News Service on the air, the six o'clock network edition. London, the Soviet schooner Saya, claimed by Russia to be the only non-magnetic vessel in the world, has left Leningrad for a two-month scientific voyage in the North Atlantic. The schooner has anchors, chains, pumps, and compressors made of non-magnetic metal. Vienna. A Vienna newspaper reported today that a Hungarian policeman escaped to freedom with a friend he had arrested for anti-communist activities. The newspaper said the policeman opened the cell and they left the southeastern Hungarian town on bicycles, crossed a cleared minefield, and hitchhiked to Vienna to claim political asylum. This has been the six o'clock edition of the Yankee Network News Service. Now, the local news. Granby. Yes, if you don't like the weather in New England, wait a minute. Nowhere else are the people so preoccupied with the state of the elements, present and future. Bright skies with some cloud accumulation toward evening. Temperatures will be in the 80s along the coast. Skies will be cloudy today with scattered showers. From Eastport to Block Island, the weather will be... The time is 7.30. Now, your Yankee weatherman. Now the forecast by states for Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Whether at work or at play, going shopping or to the beach, the New Englander wants to know what the weather will be. But what he does about the weather once he knows what it's going to be... Influx of cooler air at higher elevations will produce showers along the coast this afternoon. Stay tuned for the Yankee Home and Food Show. This is the easy listening spot on your dial, WNAC Boston. Who was it said something about the power behind the throne? In New England, the power of women has never been disputed. From the day that Dorothy Quincy married John Hancock, through the battle of the suffragettes to the modern automobile purchase, women have had their say, subtly or volubly. And New England women listen regularly to this. Welcome to the Yankee Home and Food Show. And here to greet you is Duncan MacDonald. Hello there. I hope you're all just fine today. We have a special feature that I think will interest all of you. And in just a minute, I'll tell you all about it. The Yankee Home and Food Show is a New England institution, bringing 20 years of experience in programming to the women of New England covering the range and scope of subjects of interest to the modern woman. 
or the homemaker accurate information on the decoration of the home, inside and out, with frequent interviews of experts in the fields of decorating, planning, gardening, and the buying, storage, and preparation of the food she cooks. In the recipe department, no long and involved formulae, but quick, efficient preparations, making full use of the time-saving products and methods. The director of the Yankee Home and Food Show makes periodic trips to the sources of information, such as the great Boston wholesale market, checking on prices, trends, best buys, and reports the information to her listeners, keeping them up to date on the latest quotations, supply and demand. And of course, she uses the information herself. Thrift and economy are natural traits with the New England women. Fashions for a lady, of course. Through interviews and information from the fashion centers of the world, gleaned from visits to the leading fashion shows in New York. The Yankee Home and Food Show reviews the literature of interest to the New England women, reports on stage and screen, summer theaters, music festivals, and introduces the homemaker to the leading personalities in the arts through interviews and on-the-scene reports. On-the-scene reports of events and occasions around New England are the highlights of the Yankee Home and Food Show broadcast, as was the broadcast of the visit to Marblehead in Massachusetts during the famous race week there. Listeners were transported by vivid word pictures to that city of infinite charm, full of stories and legends from the past, of sailing ships and Yankee skippers, of Washington and Lafayette, the city that claims to be the birthplace of the United States Navy. And the listeners shared in the excitement and color of the regatta as it appeared from the judge's yacht. White sails over blue ocean, skimming like low-flying gulls, dipping low against the water on the crosswind leg, snapping at the comeabout, slicing proudly through the air at the finish. Yes, listeners to the Yankee Home and Food Show visit Marblehead during race week. Presque Isle, Maine, for a military occasion. Famous restaurants, summer theater openings. It's not exactly a policy, rather it just happens this way. Because what New England women want Whatever the New England woman wants, she'll find it in one of the daily broadcasts of the Yankee Home and Food Show. Yes, and one of the reasons is because you're good enough to write and telephone and let us know what you want. It's always a great pleasure to hear from you, and so I hope that you'll keep doing just that. Wherever you go, however you travel in New England, it's hard to find the place where the Yankee Network does not reach. More than 90% is in the primary coverage area of a Yankee station. And the local station has the ear of the local people. Over 10 million people, men, women, and children, listening to radio in almost 3 million radio homes and in more than 3 million cars going to and returning from work out for the day or for the evening, listening to car radios. Add to this almost four million visitors to New England each year, spending nearly a billion dollars in the New England market. And even that, but a minor fraction of the 12 billion dollars of retail trade each year. Add wholesale selling, and the figure mounts to more than 21 billion. Three billion dollars in food alone, over two billion and a half in automotive stores, not including the purchase of 380,000 new cars. New England's three and a half million workers with some two and a half billion man hours of labor produce $15 billion worth of goods, 80% of the nation's packaged and frozen food, 37% of the shoes and other footwear, 62% of the silver for the nation's tables, 59% of the newsprint, in total giving the New England worker more than $18 billion a year to spend averaging something like $5,000 per household. And taken person for person, the New Englander has more money in the bank than he earns in any single year. These are New Englanders, conservatively progressive, traditionally modern in moderation. Businessmen, professionals, craftsmen, proud of their labor, proud of their home, proud of their families. These are the people who listen to This is the Yankee Network.
This is the Yankee Network, and only Yankee serves all of New England. This is the Yankee story. <laughs>